Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. There is no reasonable explanation of Alexander Dumas. He was a rich man. We note with interest that he went bankrupt in the theater. He was a revolutionary. His grandfather was a marquis. His grandmother was a negress. He was born as Napoleon became emperor. He died in poverty as the Germans marched into France. He wrote The Count of Monte Cristo as a newspaper serial, and shortly after the last installment, a ball and a bullfight were organized for him in Seville, and finally in Algiers, the customs men let his baggage through without examination. Such things don't and can't happen today, but then neither does Alexander Dumas himself, the wildest romance of a man who could and did openly maintain at 70 numerous establishments and a literary factory as well whose quantitative output is equaled in the arts only by Rubens' studio. It is no secret and no shame either that the Chateau Monte Cristo was haunted by many ghostwriters and that its owner signed his name to more books than anyone could ever write. It is not expected of Pharaoh that he build with his own hands his own pyramids, and the mere blueprint of one Dumas plot is an airtight alibi for a whole career. Of all these, out of question, the most gloriously complex, possibly the most impossible, a mathematical miracle, as perfect as watchworks and as big as Pittsburgh, among hundreds, one Dumas plot persists as the most ingenious tall story ever perpetrated by the mind of man, the Count of Monte Cristo.